Welcome to episode 536 of Salcedo Paranormal, and tonight I am sharing true paranormal stories on the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page, and that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences. Whether they're your own or from others that you trust, happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before uh, Trouble Minds Radio starts. And I'd like to thank, as always, Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing these shows and putting them up on the station as you hear them with the music at the beginning and end of every episode. If you'd like to help the show, there are some different ways to do that. Um, You can always share the show with others and rate and review it on your uh, favorite podcast platform. Um, You can also find paranormal fiction and nonfiction books I've written over on Amazon. And I have a Patreon page you can also join for one extra episode of uh, True Paranormal Stories from the Web every month. And that is available to all membership level tiers there. Or if you'd like to just make a one-time donation, you can do that through PayPal. Uh, Help is never expected, but always appreciated, as I um, am legally blind, and I live on a fixed income, and um, there are expenses in making these shows, from equipment to uh, research materials to uh, travel expenses in some cases. And I think that takes care of all of that, so we can get on to these stories here. And um, just uh, let me see here. So, yeah, that's that file. All right, I think we're all set. Thank you all again, as always, for being here, um, especially the those of you that are able to make it to the live streams. I know um, everyone is busy and has things to do, so I never expect anyone to be here, but always appreciate it, appreciate it when you're able to. So, um, okay. First story here, this one says, I think I have a spirit in my Airbnb. This led me to install cameras in the house after I had some strange experiences. The audio captured includes a loud bang with the phrase, you're welcome. The hallway light goes on and off. And there are sounds of an old door opening recorded. Another loud bang, followed by a shushing sound, was also also captured on audio. I have attempted to communicate with the spirit, asking it to speak toward the camera. The only response is a whistle. But after closing the session, Three audios of strange rhythmic sounds and screeching were recorded. The rhythmic sounds resemble an American Indian, uh, Native American, I'm sorry, uh, ceremony type rhythm. Though I am not sure about that. What do you all think? For anyone worried about my attempts to communicate with the spirit, I go through grounding. Uh, protecting and cleansing myself before and after these experiences. And that's where that one ends. I love how in the very end they're, they're just sort of like, don't worry, don't worry. I, I know how to take care of myself. Everything's okay. Everything's fine. Just wondering what's going on there. Uh, <laughs> just like that. They already know what's coming, I guess. So, um, so yeah, I like that one. It's just partly because of that that last paragraph or whatever, that last part. Um, this is not uncommon, it seems, in 
these places that are used as sort of temporary residences. And I think it can be a, a whole mix of things because first, you, first of all, you have whatever energy was already there of whoever was already there. Um, and then you have people coming and going over time. They're like hotels. They're basically hotels. They're just only one, one place for one um, group of people. So it's like a miniature hotel. And if anyone has been looking into anything paranormal, you know there are so many hotels that seem to be just centers of paranormal activity. So, and over the years, doing these shows, I've come across many um, art articles and um, reports through these kinds of shows of people having experiences in different um, rental homes, Airbnbs, and all those kinds of things. So it doesn't surprise me, really, in a way. Not to say that everyone is going to have activity all the time. Or, or even that, or that'll be all the time. But it doesn't surprise me that there's activity, especially if you have the person that owns the place sort of trying to communicate. Now, of course, I understand in a way if they're trying to figure out what's going on there, they decide to do that. That's their choice. But that is also, in a way, sort of feeding more energy into it that then may allow for more activity. So that was a, all those little factors, all those things there, that was what sort of got my attention with this, this um, account of that, of those experiences, because it sounds like there was activity before the person started doing these things. And then they started recording and got more activity through the audio and video. Um, on the other hand, I hope that they don't have all the all that recording equipment in place. <laughs> I just thought of this. Hopefully, hopefully it's not all there when when the place is, has um, tenants. So that's a whole other issue. But um, so yeah. But as far as the paranormal side of all that goes. I'm not sure if I would have read that, if I would have thought about that beforehand, but too late now. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It just sounds like there's just a lot of energy that maybe was already there, and even more is being added by the owner, <coughs> excuse me, and then by people that are coming and going, maybe having their own experiences as well. So, um, so yeah, that one definitely got my attention with all all that there, all the different kinds of audio. And some of that, you never know how much of that is going to be residual or from other times. Or It's really hard to pin down who is doing what for what reason. Um, it's I've heard different um, paranormal shows of investigations where it's sort of taken for granted or, or assumed or thought that if the people investigating get any kind of recordings, it's meant for them or for the people that they're investigating for. And so it has to have some meaning when I don't think that's always the case. I think there is such a thing as just random results, random recordings of things. So, um, so yeah, that's sort of my thoughts on that one. I wanted to make sure I got that in because I think it's an important um, topic and thing to talk about here and there is these locations that are sort of used for temporary lodging and then also just what happens when you um, investigate these places or any place. Sometimes you will get results and sometimes people like that. Other times, not so much. So, so that's sort of why I don't really do any investigating here at my own home because I have enough to do. I don't need to be dealing with a lot more paranormal activity um, as well as just day-to-day -day life. So anyway, so that takes care of that, um, that story there. 
So let me see here. Moving on to the next one. This one says, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I want to skip one. A couple of these are short. Well, this one middle one is shorter, but anyway. This one says, I was getting dressed in my upstairs bathroom with the radio playing, classic rock, and old hits. Suddenly I heard a somewhat robotic female voice in my left ear saying, hello? I was not scared, just a bit startled. I wondered if the voice might have been from the radio, but I ruled it out as I am familiar with the classic rock uh, song that was playing. The voice was strange and disembodied, neither scary nor threatening. And that's where that one ends. It's, it's a shorter one. The fact that they're not wearing headphones when they're doing that, to me, rules out any kind of... Um, I've heard that the wires from headphones from headphones can pick up um, other transmissions, other radio waves from other devices, even like um, from the radios in trucks, as in like the communication radios. Um, so I've heard about that, but this doesn't sound like it was that. Unless they were still able to pick up some kind of transmission. I actually don't, rule that out and i say that because there was one night i don't know months ago now where i was hearing i i it just was like clear as day in, but in my head i was hearing um my one of my local radio stations just the music but it was just that quality that it has um and it was the songs they would play sort of similar to this story and I was hearing it as I was sitting here very relaxed. Um, I think I was waiting for one of my episodes to upload. And so I was looking at the screen, but I didn't have any audio playing at the time. And um, and so, yeah, I heard like a, um, part of a song and part of another song from this classic rock station. And it was the transition and everything, too. So I do wonder if we can pick up on radio waves in some rare cases, going back to the last episode of the show. We just, I just did um, back to Charles Schwartz, wild talents, the uh, abilities that we all may have that um, come and go, or that we, we don't know we have, or all those different things. I think that's a possibility. So I wonder if in that case, the writer there, was picking up on, let's say, someone making a phone call. Um, I've heard that cell phones, other things, there are other communication devices that use radio it's waves that to send out the um, the signal, the information. And so I wonder if she was, she, if the the writer there was hearing someone just saying hello on their device. And so, but it sounded, it was so unexpected and everything, and it was came from nowhere, as far as the writer could tell, that they thought it was something paranormal. And I mean, it still can maybe possibly be that, too, um, because obviously not everyone picks up on these things all the time. So, um, yeah, the, from the, the chat there, Derek says, uh, the brain might be acting like a radio and receiving our consciousness rather than the brain producing it and maybe some random waves might sneak into that process with all the waves we have. Yeah. Shooting around these days. Yeah, definitely. So, but yeah, I'll never forget that. I was just sitting here and, and it's just, it was wild. It was like, wow, I'm, that was the radio. And, um, it only happened that one time, but it's one of those things. I don't, I don't think I'll ever forget it because I wasn't expecting that. So, um, so yeah, that's that one. I think that's all I have to say about that one. And um, we can move on to the last one for this episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this one says, My family and I often visited my grandmother's house 
on the east coast of Florida. I was comfortable in the lit little town. I was very familiar with the back roads, shortcuts, and scenic drives. My mother and I took a leisurely ride one day. My mother went down a road I knew, although further than I had gone before myself. It went through the salt marsh. That's odd. Salt is used for um, a lot of different magical paranormal defenses in ways. Uh, it says, I recognized the area and mentioned going there with my grandma once. My mother was surprised as my grandma hadn't driven in years and didn't own a car anymore. I described a big Victorian house on a hill overlooking the marsh. My mother pulled over, but we didn't see a house. Instead, we saw remnants of a homestead. I vividly described the two-story house, including details like gingerbread wood carving and a porch swing. I remembered coming with my grandma to visit a sick friend. My grandma brought food, and I played with a little girl on the front porch. My mother revealed that the house burned down in the late 1940s, and the lady who lived there was a friend of my grandma. My mother shared her own memory of visiting the house with her mother, so the writer's grandma, and bringing food when the lady was ill. My mother had always wondered about the little blonde girl she played with on the porch that day. Both my mother and I broke out in goosebumps, realizing that approximately 20 years before I had been born, we played on the same porch with each other. And that's where that one ends. Uh, I'd forgotten about that one, but... That one just blows my mind. So was that was the writer a ghost of some kind? Or was it some kind of weird I don't even know with that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Was that some kind of weird time overlap? Which still doesn't make sense. Um <clears throat> excuse me. One moment, please. Okay, so, um, I don't know, ghost of a girl playing with her mother, that would, or the woman, the, the kid that would eventually be her mother? I mean, really odd story there. Um, really odd account. And I don't know, it's just really amazing, that one. Um, it's just, it seems like maybe possibly. That's not the first time I've heard of um, people that have, had have sort of known their parents or had memories of being with their parents or family before they were born. Um, there's that's not the first time I've heard of that. Um, yeah, it's uh, weird. Like st realities are all stacked on top of each other, and sometimes there's some bleed through or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, possibly there. Yeah, and it sounds like at least to. The, the mother of the writer, the um, the writer <laughs> as a girl, little girl. But then that also is odd because the mother was playing with the little girl. And it was before the writer, who apparently was that little girl, was born. So was the mother playing with sort of the basic, I don't know, image or personality of that that spirit before it was um before it was sort of born because it wasn't like it's not like it was the adult version of the writer that was there that one is just all kinds of of um strange there but i've heard some sort of similar accounts of people have like i said have it being 
having having memories of being places with their family before they were born. So this is the first time though I've heard of any kind of major interaction like that. But if the kid, if the mother was at the time of the kid more open, um, sort of not thinking about whether or not paranormal things could be real. Also, if they just didn't even know if it, if it looked like a regular little girl, then they could, they, they could have maybe seen this, this, what was a, um, what was their, their future daughter. It's also odd because the writer says they remember riding out to the place. So it sounds like they were in the vehicle with their mother, but their mother didn't see them. So, yeah, it's the, yeah, or uh, Derek says, or we live in a simulation and there's only so many original characters. So sometimes the characters need to be repeated, but usually not within the same family. So people don't notice and the simulation messed up and repeated the character too close to, or too close in some family. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, multiverse kind of, Maybe they were just, yeah, I, I have no idea with that one. That one just, usually I can kind of come up with, like, general ideas of what I think happened. That one, I, I can't even do that with. That one, I just have no idea. Um, but because of that, I actually love it even more because that just, in my mind, is just, I can't process it. I, I mean, I don't know, how, don't know how to explain it in any real, real way. It's not like, oh, that, that was the ghost of a deceased child that unfortunately passed there that was um that the writer's mom played with or whatever as a kid <laughs> um so yeah i don't know about that one so i didn't know about it when i found it at the time and i still don't know about that one so there you go quite the story to to end with i would say um i wish i i had the uh <clears throat> I wish I could um, take the time to sort of set them up, these stories up, and have them um, start with the, uh, one story that's kind of interesting and another one that's even more wild than the last one be that wild or that unexplainable for every show. But that would just take so much work, so much more work to do. And plus, that would also be organized and, and sort of scripted in a way that I don't want to do. But Love that it happened this time. So, our childhood friend Derek says that we incarnated to be their best friend's grandchild or something. Yeah. If we pick our families before birth or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, that one just, then that's all I have on that one. Usually I have a lot. And then after that, I say, I don't know. That one I just don't even know from the very beginning. So, um, that's it for this show. Again, as always, um, please, when you look in the show descriptions, uh, check out all the links in those descriptions. Uh, some of them are for, again, friends of the show that uh, have their own uh, shows, and um, and I, I'm on them sometimes, and uh, and then they come on mine. And also, whenever you see each episode, if there's a guest, um, especially one of um, sort of the people that have been coming on for a while, please check out the links there in case they have um, they have their own projects as well outside of shows. And, um, yeah, please be sure to listen to the uh, Trouble Minds Radio Network. There's uh, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. It's all kinds of shows in there all day long. And uh, sort of um, throughout the day, they're kind of – it's set at like a – I believe like a random sort of uh, system where it just picks out one and then picks out another one. So you never know what you're going to hear throughout the day until the evening. So. Um, but anyway, thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all in the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care. <laughs>